everyone, my name is Gabby and today is Thursday, November 28th, 2019. I am currently coming to you from my dorm room in Chicago. In the moment that you're watching this video or at least the moment that it's being uploaded, I am back home for Thanksgiving, celebrating the holiday with my family. So obviously Thanksgiving is a time to be grateful for all the good things that you have in your life and to just sort of be reflective and a little bit sentimental. So I wanted to take a walk down memory lane and and celebrate a fandom that's very important to me because it's celebrating its 10 year anniversary today. And that is the Big Time Rush fandom or just Big Time Rush in general. I grew up with Big Time Rush. I feel like I've talked about BTR a few times on this channel here and there when I've talked about music, but it's not something I've ever really focused on a lot because in the time that I made this channel, I had sort of moved on to talking about books and movies and TV shows and other things besides Big Time Rush because the show had been over for several years. By the time I had made my channel, and really started making videos and coming into the YouTube community. So I want to take the time now to walk down memory lane and talk about my experience in the Big Time Rush fandom, talk about some moments that were really important to me, and just kind of reflect on this show as it celebrates its 10 year anniversary. So I guess the best place to start is at the beginning. The first time that I saw Big Time Rush on TV was when I was over at my best friend's house and the episode that was on was Big Time Mansion. I I only watched half of the episode and I remember my friend's older sister asking me if I'd ever seen the show before and I said no. From what I watched of the episode I was very much intrigued and from that moment on it felt like the show stuck with me because all I would see on TV when I turned on Nickelodeon was the halfway there music video and that would play over and over during commercial breaks and there was some part of me that just felt like I couldn't escape Big Time Rush like it was everywhere. So although I didn't watch it when it first originally aired I I feel like I've been with the show from the very beginning because I was caught up by the time the first season finished airing because I watched some of the first few episodes of the first season live. I remember watching Big Time video when it aired on Nickelodeon because that was when the City Is Ours music video dropped and I remember there being two different music videos like there was one that had some of the BTR cast members in it and then there was one that just had regular extras in it. I don't know why that choice was made but I specifically remember there being two distinct versions like the one that was played in the episode and the one that would like play on Nickelodeon. I remember watching Big Time Concert which was the season one finale that I believe was like an hour long special and so it's hard because this was like ten, nine, ten years ago to remember specifically how I caught up on all the episodes. I probably watched them online through Nickelodeon's website or through a Nickelodeon app but I know that I was watching uh, the show continuously as each episode was airing towards the end of the first season and like from that point I was hooked. I think the show changed my my life in a lot of ways. For one, BTR was my first ever concert. So I got to see the guys in concert for the first time on February 24th, 2012 in Rosemont. My mom had gotten me resale tickets for my birthday and I'd been wanting to see the guys for a while in concert. So having those tickets in my hand, knowing that I was going to see them and that I was going to be at their concert was amazing to me. The tour that I was seeing them on was the Better With You tour. It was just so special for my first concert. I think about it now, not so much in terms of my own experience, but also my mom's experience as well, because it was the first time that she got to take her daughter to a concert. So I think about her watching me being excited and wanting to scream along to all the songs and just have such a good time and like what that experience must have been like for her as a mother. But for me, it was really special because I'd never been to a concert before. And so it was like, I was surrounded by all these people and these four guys who I'd been watching on television for almost two years were now suddenly in front of me like the idea of that was insane to me because for all of my life up until that point I had only seen these people through a screen so it felt like my world and theirs were two totally separate things and that those could never collide and that was like the first moment that they really collided for me and my 11 year old little mind was just shook I have such fond memories of the concert it was so much fun and even though I was up like in the balcony of the Rosemont Horizon and so I couldn't see a lot of the stage, I had such a great time. Unfortunately though, when I do look back on this, I think about another rival boy band that came into the picture for the first time. So I feel like I have to talk about that because unfortunately it's become a large part of my big time rush experience. So 
let's talk about One Direction. 1D. They opened up for Big Time Rush on the Music Sounds Better With You tour and their first stop opening up for them was in Chicago or Rosemont to be more specific. And it was also their first time performing in the United States. So it's kind of cool to say that I got to see One Direction perform for the first time ever in the United States. Like that's kind of a dope thing to see an artist that is like an international sensation and all of these guys now have these big immense solo careers where it's impossible to get tickets for their tours and it's ridiculously expensive. Like yeah, it's kind of cool to say that you were there at the beginning of all of that when that happened. I had no idea who One Direction was when I went into that concert. Their first album wasn't even out. They performed like one thing in What Makes You Beautiful, but I think What Makes You Beautiful was the only song that was out um, and their album wasn't out yet, but I think it may have been available for pre-order and I remember some of the songs once they came out or I may have pre-ordered them because I was like, oh, this is good. I had no idea what would become of Big Time Rush and One Direction in terms of the boy band feud and all the ridiculous stuff that happened around like late 2012, 2013. That would be really unfortunate. I enjoyed seeing him at the time and I specifically remember when I was at that concert in Rosemont when I was waiting to get into the venue, my mom and I were surrounded by a whole bunch of girls who were probably my age now or younger that had like signs with One Direction's face on there and I was like, who are they here to see? Like, I don't understand because I was like, I'm here to see Big Time Rush and I like didn't know if there was any other Big Time Rush fans around me. I specifically remember there being lots of One Direction fans and I think I remember that once One Direction finished, there was a whole bunch of people who left the venue and I don't know if this happened at other dates, but I know it happened at mine. And so it felt like One Direction had now taken over this tour and there was people that were buying tickets just to see them and weren't staying there for the main event. And that felt like the beginning of all of this to me where it was like One Direction took over everything and you got to a point where Nickelodeon decided that they would rather go after One Direction and put One Direction on an episode of iCarly, give One Direction a KCA to bribe them to do a show on Nickelodeon rather than supporting their own boy band. And that started to make me really upset because Big Time Rush was a show that I had fallen in love with. I loved watching the episodes when they aired. I loved listening to the guys' music. I specifically love Elevate. That's my favorite album out of the three that they've released. I think there's so many really beautiful songs on there like Cover Girl and Invisible and You're Not Alone. Songs like that that got me through some really tough times because with the introduction of One Direction also came the introduction of bullying which like I should not be saying that enthusiastically but like every kid gets picked on. I mean you're lucky if you don't. For me I got picked on for liking Big Time Rush. I got picked on online by some girls at my school and I specifically remember an instance in seventh grade where I wanted to sit at a table with my friend and some other girls and they all liked One Direction. My other friend wanted to sit with me and like really wasn't a part of this conflict. I asked like oh can I sit with you and they told me no and so I had to go and sit at a table on my own. Thankfully there was a few other girls that came and sat down with me but if they hadn't done that I would be sitting on my own and it was just because I liked a different boy band than them and I got called names. They called my boy band names and be like you you like a kitty boy band and things like that and it got thrown in my face a lot and it's like a sixth seventh grader. It's not fun to be called those things because you're trying to make friends you're trying to fit in and that's always been difficult for me to make friends just because I'm not very aggressive and don't like throwing myself at people. Something that was already hard for me it became immensely difficult because I knew nobody else that liked Big Time Rush. Like it was just something that felt so exclusive and personal to me and I think one of the reasons why it affected me the most is because my generation for the most part all liked the same stuff. Everybody had common stuff to talk about because most people were watching Hannah Montana or Wizards of Waverly Place or whatever was going on on Disney Channel. There really wasn't a lot of deviation that was happening and so for the first time I decided to deviate from what everyone else liked and it sort of made me a bit of an outcast and a pariah and I'm grateful for it now because I think it led me down the path where I'm like if I like to read I can read. If I want to listen to these artists that nobody's listening to I can do that and obviously that's not a problem now that I am in college and even more so when I was in high school like everyone liked different stuff but like back then it was hard because that really wasn't a common thing. Yeah it was unfortunate to feel those things and there was times when I like came home and cried because I liked a different boy band than everybody else and I was like should I even still watch the show? Should I still listen to music? Should I try to just act like I'm not a fan? And I hate that I even had those thoughts because if something makes you that happy you shouldn't feel torn up about it. Eventually it got to a point where I started to get over it and I was like I like this band and they make me happy and that's it. And I think it was also another thing where Big Time Rush for me was something that I felt like I didn't need to justify the reason why I liked it to somebody else. I feel like a lot of times in at least the pop culture, the entertainment world, it's like if you like a certain movie or you like a certain book or whatever, you have to have some sort of justification. Like I really love this movie because the screenwriter is really well known and has a really 
wonderful script or the plot is just so well executed and makes such interesting commentary. There always needs to be some reason why you feel like you like something. And it can't just be, I like this because it makes me happy. That's what Big Time Rush was for me because honestly, some of the episodes are kind of cheesy and corny and ridiculous. And yeah, it's targeted for a child audience. So obviously it's not the most sophisticated stuff, but it made me happy at the time. Like I genuinely enjoy watching it and it brought me light and joy and happiness and that should be enough. And it should be enough for whatever it is that you like or you're into, like, like the things that you like. And that was kind of one of the reasons why I started this YouTube channel is because I wanted to be a place where I could talk about the things that I like and feel free to do that and not feel judged for liking the things that I liked because I've always felt odd about having a passion or an interest that was different for everyone else because I always felt like I have this thing that I'm so excited about and passionate about that I could scream to the rooftops about, but nobody to share that with. And this became a space for me to do that. Like Big Time Rush, I think, was a large part of the reason why I created a YouTube channel. I liked them for so long, had nobody to talk to it about. And so once I started to read and started to find other things, I'm like, I need an outlet to be able to share my love of entertainment and pop culture and other things with people. And this became my outlet. So I guess trying to get back to some sort of timeline, the next time that I saw the guys in concert was on August 4th, 2012 on the big time summer tour. Cody Simpson opened for the guys and so did Rachel Crow. And that concert was so much fun. It was at the first Midwest Bank Amphitheater. I believe the name has changed now, but I have now not been back to that venue since uh, 2013, which is when I saw the guys for the last time, which I'll get to in a few minutes. But that concert was particularly fun. I remember it was raining uh, the day of the concert and I was worried that the show was gonna get rained out. And I remember feeling so upset because I was so excited about getting to see the guys again. I had put a tattoo on my face and I had made a poster for the guys that said, Big Time Rush makes me want to elevate a little higher than my mom had helped me put together. I had on a hat that had Logan's face on it and I had a Big Time Rush shirt on and I was just like so hype and then like total geeked out fandom mode. And so when I thought the show was gonna get rained out, I was really upset, but thankfully the weather cleared up and I got to be on the floor level for the show, which like it was the first time that I was ever on a floor level for a concert too, which was exciting. And I just had the best time because it gave me a space to authentically be myself and be surrounded by people who love these four artists just as much as I do. So that concert was really, really fun. It began this sort of thing for me where it was like every time Big Time Rush is in town, I'm going to their Chicago date and it became like an auto buy thing for me because they were like one of the music artists that I like loved and supported the most and would like go to any of their concerts and buy all their stuff and watch all the episodes of the show. So one of the things that became most important to me in the fandom was my Instagram account for a big time rush. So it still exists. It's still out there. I'm not going to tell you the username of it because that would be super embarrassing and I don't want anyone searching it out. But I had a Instagram account dedicated to big time rush and it was one of the first Instagram accounts I ever made because it was around the time that Instagram became thing. So I would post like ridiculous pictures on there of the guys and I would have a caption on there. And honestly, I had no idea what I was doing. Like I feel like my time on Instagram then has changed significantly to now in terms of like what's Instagram acceptable and how you format your profile with all the pictures and have a certain layout and aesthetic. Like it was just me posting pictures and there was like no rhyme or reason to it. But honestly, one of the things that was so great about it is that it was this community where all of us could talk about stuff and everyone was friends with each other. And on that account, I had almost close to a thousand followers, which is the most amount of followers I've ever ever had at any point on a social media account. And it was just me posting stuff about either my own life and what was going on or about the guys. I had wrote a fan fiction at the time about the guys that was so poorly written. I can see how much my writing style has evolved since then, which like, thank God. But I like look back on it and the account gives me a lot of memories because there's so many funny pictures and memes and things that became a part of our community, the way that we interacted, the way that we all sort of shared a similar space because we all were sort of like the outcasts who liked this boy band that nobody else liked. So whenever fandom dramas or feuds would happen, like we would come to Instagram and it would be a way to talk about those things and support our guys and have 
this family where it felt like whenever we went through stuff we went through it together and obviously I'll never know the full extent of all the drama and things that happened in the fandom but it felt like a way to go through it and feel less alone and the Instagram fandom meant a lot to me at the time and it still does because I think it was the first like idea of fandom and community that I've ever really had so any other fandom or community that I've had I guess it taught me a lot of things and it gave me a better understanding of how to interact in fandom going forward and I got to just talk to a lot of really great people even though like I have no idea who any of these people are now it felt like at the time like a space for all of us to share this love that we have for a boy band and I loved the Instagram fandom and still do and was really really grateful to have it even though if I was very young and immature at the time so I think one of the biggest milestones for me in the big time rush fandom was getting to meet the guys for the first time I met them at the Cuyahoga Falls stop in Ohio so I'm obviously from Chicago so like why the hell would I go out to Ohio to meet the guys I have family that lives in Ohio and so I went to see them over the summer and then I went and saw the guys in concert while I was visiting them out there I was so paralyzed if you get the pun when I met the guys I had never met anyone famous before again like yes I'd seen the guys in concert but then again there's still a decent distance between us and it's like I'm going and watching them perform but like actually getting to meet them the idea of that was insane to me and unfathomable and I remember when my mom bought the VIP tickets and was going through all of that like I ran laughs like around my living room and jumped up and down and screamed and freaked out because I was going to meet my idols these people who had changed my life these people who I had been watching on TV for like three years and it just felt mind-blowing to me by the time I had met them the show had already finished airing and all the episodes had wrapped up um, the final episode I haven't watched since I think the first time that I saw it air maybe I rewatched it once but I haven't seen it in years although I definitely want to rewatch it and probably will have rewatched it by the time this episode goes up to celebrate the 10-year anniversary but the final episode like it kind of felt like a smack in the face a little bit because it was all about blimps or whatever although like I think rockets was the term that was used but basically it was like an episode that dealt with an award show and it felt like such a slap in the face because one of my most recent members of award shows in the Big Time Rush fandom was like guys not getting nominated in their final year and then the guys losing a blimp to One Direction both Carlos and Big Time Rush lost blimps when like clearly they had won like how rigged that was and how heartbreaking that was for that to happen that like Nickelodeon would selectively choose to support other people than people on their own network like Kendall and Stephen Kramer Glickman talking about that on a podcast and just being very interested to hear their thoughts on the topic because it's something that like upset me so much of the time and I didn't understand although now I'm over it although still kind of annoyed and petty about it but then getting to meet them like after the show had like all the episodes had finished aired and then getting to go to the concert and see them and get to meet them you know as all of this was starting to wrap up and end was really really special because it'd been years that I've been watching the guys and it was a really great moment and I think it's a moment that changed my life forever because it was the first moment I realized like I can meet the people who inspire me and I can thank them for transforming my life by simply deciding to tell a story and I think it's kind of what led me to go to like author signings to want to be in broadcast journalism to get in press rooms to ask questions about the stories that are telling and why they matter and get people to care about the pop culture and entertainment world and the messages that are being sent there I don't think like at the moment that that all really clicked for me but if I hadn't met them I don't think I would have gone down that path of like wanting to meet other people of wanting to be involved in the pop culture and entertainment scene realizing that I can meet these people that I can get in those rooms that that's something that I can do for a living so that changed a lot of things for me. Meeting them was really special. I didn't say much to any of them. I remember walking into the room. I gave Logan the biggest hug because Logan was my favorite because he was cute and he was the nerd and that's so on brand for me. I like just remember hugging him and looking up to his eyes and he called me cute and I died there on the spot and I've been dead ever since and it just was like oh my god. <laughs> I'm still kind of a little bit embarrassed thinking about it now but I feel really bad because I didn't say anything to any of the other guys because I had such a short amount of time. I did like we took the picture and like it ended like I didn't get to say anything to them and the entire time that I was waiting in line I was thinking like what am I gonna say to them and I was preparing like this whole thing and it got kind of rushed my mom was there off to the side and I think she had talked to Kendall or something because I had also made a t-shirt for the concert and my mom helped me to 
design it that said Gabby is crazy for big time rush 24 7 and crazy for was spelled out the way that like crazy for you is spelled out using the number and not the word and then 24 7 was spelled out the way that the final album title was spelled out and it had all the guys like names listed on the side and it was really cute and I've like posting pictures up here like in the editing process so you can see the shirt or at least maybe some of it in the meet and greet picture the picture is actually on my desk right here <laughs> so yeah you really can't see that much the shirt but it was a good picture I was really worried because there was a part of me that didn't think that I looked at the camera and there was a part of me that was worried that I blinked some of my fashion choices back then were a little bit questionable the headband and like the flower clip were not that cute the jeggings that were like actual leggings with like a jean material probably not the best choice but I was so happy in that moment and I wish I'd gotten to say more to the guys I wish I got to thank them the concert itself was really fun I was up close my mom got some really amazing pictures and then a few days later I got to see the guys again in Chicago for the last time on August 4th and I believe Logan and Carlos came into the crowd so I got to see them again too which was really cool and that concert was super fun Victoria Justice opened Olivia Summerland opened and it was just such a good time I think the big time rush concerts I've been to have been some of my favorite concerts to go to because their concerts are just so electric there's just this energy about them where there was choreography and lights and a DJ and confetti and pyrotechnics like flames and smoke and they had like a camera and it was like this whole big production and it was so much fun because it wasn't just people singing like there was choreography and everything like the guys went all out for these shows and they were so much fun to watch and be a part of <laughs> And I don't think I've gone to a concert that matches that experience. The Big Time Rush concerts have been some of the most fun shows that I've been to because of just the level of excitement and energy that are involved in them. Also the idea of like the worldwide girl and bringing somebody up on stage, like I love the idea of the guys doing that. It's just such a beautiful and special thing and made those concerts really memorable and a really fun thing to be a part of to get to see those girls brought up on stage. I was really young at the time so I like did not want to be up on stage. If the guys ever were to do a reunion tour, which I don't think is going to happen and I personally don't want to happen because I don't think you can remake the magic that happened around the time of like all of this actually coming together and happening when it did and I think all the guys have gone in some directions and the most that I would want is for them to all get together and have dinner like I don't want it to be a tour I want them to be able to have their own lives and not feel like they have to be dragged into this like they're adults now and I think a lot of them want to at least move past it and start their own careers their own thing I'm happy with the time that we got and reflecting and walking down memory lane and re-watching episodes of the show and just having those moments and experiences. I mean, I had lots of really wonderful memories in the fandom. I think a really special moment for me this year was getting to meet Logan again at the Chop Shop in Chicago because he toured with Jake Miller and getting his meet and greet once it finally went on sale. I remember like from the date it was announced, just every day I was like, when is he gonna announce meet and greet? When am I gonna get more information? The minute that he like dropped his meet and greet, like I immediately went onto his website and bought meet and greet for him. And so getting to meet him again, actually getting to talk to him instead of just staring into his eyes was great. I got him to sign my journal, which is amazing because I have so many people's signatures in there who mean the world to me. So that was insane. Getting to thank him for his music. It was just such a good moment and genuinely like felt like being a little kid again and getting to return to my childhood and something that made me really, really, really happy. I think that's about it for this walk down memory lane. I could go on and on and on about this boy band. I could talk about about, like jokes in the fandom and react to like old memes and pictures I could react to old episodes of Big Time Rush and talk about my favorite episodes I focused more on like concerts and getting to see the guys in person and like different things like just within the fandom rather than just the show itself although obviously the show was a large part of the fandom just because I wanted to talk more about those like experiences and moments rather than just like watching the episodes because a large part of that was just like oh a new episode is airing and sitting on my couch watching it there's not a lot of tangible memories there rather than just like the consistent memory of like watching each episode as it's airing. I would love to make more Big Time Rush videos if you want to see me walk down memory lane more frequently but basically this video was to say that I am just so grateful for the guys and all the people involved in making Big Time Rush a reality and I can't imagine my life without the show now. I think that about wraps it up here. Thank you all so much 
for watching. If you want to see me talk more about Big Time Rush, let me know in the comment section down below. I hope you're all having a wonderful holiday season and that you are taking time for yourself to relax, to do some fun, festive holiday things, and that you're not getting too wrapped up in all the craziness of the holiday season because it can sometimes get very stressful. If you have any Big Time Rush related memories that you want to share with me in the comment section, please let me know. I hope you're all having a wonderful day wherever you are that you're watching this. If you want to check me out on social media, you can do that. All of my links are in the description. And I guess I'll see you all next time in a new one. Goodbye. I'm trying to find inspiration